Hello, Alex here, and today we're going to talk about Rodenol and what you need to know in terms of safety, handling, and disposal. Before we go any further, I want to thank thephotoshop.ie who have sponsored this video and this video series. More about that later, but for now, let's get into it. First, a mandatory legal disclaimer and a brief overview of the format of this video. This video is purely for educational purposes and does not constitute legal or official advice or recommendations and cannot supersede or overrule your local laws and regulations. If you have any questions or concerns, consult your local council, city or other relevant board. Although they are my educated opinions, they are my opinions and do not constitute official advice or recommendations on behalf of the Photoshop. In terms of video format, I am still working things out, but tentatively, we're going to go over Rodenol, its history, its typical use cases, and then talk about its safety, handling, disposal, and importantly, cost. And in each category, I will give the developer a rating out of three. Three being the best, zero being the worst. Then at the end, we'll tally up these scores and give Rodenol an overall score out of 12. Over time, we'll build up a sort of mini database with different developers, fixers, and other chemicals, and my personal rankings thereof, and you can see how they relate to and compare to each other. Rodenal is a concentrated black and white film developer first introduced by Agfa back in 1892. Not 1982, that's 1892, 130 years ago. Rodenal is one of the oldest film developer formulations in existence. Currently, it exists under many, many names, such as Rodenal, Certinal, Blazonal, Adenal, and R09, also called R09, which is what I have here. Everybody uses the word Rodenal to refer to all of these developers. It's basically just a trademark thing, sort of like the word Velcro. Section 3 of the SDS will describe the chemical composition of Rodenal. However, it does actually leave out one of the key ingredients, which I find very strange. The primary developer or reducing agent in Rodenol is 4-aminophenol, also called P-aminophenol or para-aminophenol. This is what reduces your silver halide salts onto the growing silver crystal to actually develop your silver during the development process. The other main ingredient is potassium hydroxide, which is used to keep 4-aminophenol, which is slightly acidic, in its alkali salt form, specifically a potassium salt in this case. You can see that even in the concentrated stock solution, these are both present in less than 5% weight per volume in the final solution, which is kind of crazy to think that it's so dilute when you dilute it down to your usable 1 to 25 or 1 to 50 development solution. It's, it's crazy just how powerful this is as a stock solution. The third ingredient, which is not listed here whatsoever, is sodium sulfite or metabisulfite, which reacts with potassium hydroxide to yield sodium sulfite in solution. This effectively acts as a preservative, limiting oxidation of the 4-aminophenol over time by atmospheric oxygen either in the air in general or in the headspace of your bottle after you've cracked it open. This is the main factor in Rodenol having such a ridiculously long shelf life, and it's weird that it's not described here. However, we can see in section 5 of the SDS that sulfur dioxide is one of the potential hazards that can arise upon combustion of rodenol, which, okay, is very unlikely because it's an aqueous solution, but that's not the point. This is the only mention of there being a sulfurous compound in this mixture, and that would be the sulfite or metabisulfite. And yet it's not listed in the actual chemical composition. Strange, maybe not unprecedented, but uh, I would say highly inappropriate because the sodium sulfide is typically in solution in a 30 to 40% concentration, which is eight to 20 times as much as the 4-aminophenol and potassium hydroxide themselves, which is a bit insane. Although this obviously won't be the case for everybody, the first time a lot of people will hear about Rodenol is when they first hear about stand development, which is an alternative method of developing your film where you use a very dilute solution of developer for a very long time with little to no agitation beyond the first minute. This is particularly useful for reining in contrast in very high contrast scenes, if that's what you want to do. Um, and for that reason, it's very common when pushing film because it can even out your contrast and it won't give you more shadow detail, 
but it will give you a bit of a more usable final image, especially if you're pushing two or more stops. Rodinal is a non-solvent developer, which means it does not dissolve or soften the edges of your silver grains as they form. This yields silver grains in your final negative, which can be very rough or coarse to look at, which gives you high accutance or perceived sharpness at the cost of visibly rougher, more pronounced grain. Some people like that, some people don't. I like it for some films, but not others. It's a tool to be used as is appropriate. Rodinol is known to have a very high speed yield when used in conjunction with most film emulsions, which means that you will get a good, appropriately dense negative when using your film and Rodinol together when rating the film at its box speed. Some combinations of developer and film will give you very thin negatives under normal development conditions because the film is not able to interact with the chemistry of that specific emulsion quite well enough to give you the required density as in, you need to overexpose the film and generate more latent silver crystals that you can later develop to give you a properly dense negative. In reality, what that means for a developer with a lower speed yield is if your film is say ISO 200, you might actually have to rate it at 125 in that developer to get the same density of final negative as using that same film rated at 200 with another developer such as Rodinol. In terms of shelf life, this is one of the things Rodinol is known for. The stock solution lasts basically forever, literally decades, opened or unopened, though it will obviously last longer unopened because there's less exposure to oxygen. On the other hand, the diluted working solution has a very short shelf life. I don't know how long exactly, but apparently not very long on the order of hours. So you should realistically make it fresh before you plan to use it. The more dilute your Rodinol is, the more pronounced this effect is. I wouldn't be storing bottles of 1 to 50 or 1 to 100 Rodinol stock just waiting to be used. Let's get started with safety. Firstly, section 2 of the SDS describes the hazards associated with this material. I'm going to skim over this because you should be able to read an SDS after watching my previous video. Under the GHS system, there are three main hazards associated with Rodinol. First, it has the potential to cause mutagenic effects. That's the 4-aminophenol here. Secondly, the potassium hydroxide and the 4-aminophenol are both corrosive and can cause skin damage or eye damage. Unfortunately, I can attest to the skin damage. I won't be showing one here because I'm not sure about YouTube's policies on this kind of thing. However, a Rodinol burn is effectively like really bad psoriasis or eczema, both of which I have experience with. It's very painful, dry and scaly. You get this sort of red patchy burn. Uh, it's not like an acid burn where your skin will like, char or a base burn where your skin goes soapy. It's just dry and painful and horrible. You don't want that. For this reason, I personally always use gloves when dealing with Rodinol and I would recommend you do the same. However, do note that gloves are only usable for splash protection and do not allow you to just dunk your hands in a bucket of Rodinol ad nauseum without worry. In terms of eye damage, I always wear over glasses over my own glasses and I'd rather look like an idiot with probably ridiculous reflections in my eyes here than lose my eyes to film. What good is having film if you can't see it? The third hazard associated with Rodinol is that it is very toxic to aquatic life with long lasting effects and should not be released into the environment. Personally, I think stand developed Rodinol may be 1 to 50, which I nearly never do. It's usually either 1 to 25 or 1 plus 100. 1 plus 100 may be able to go down the sink. 1 plus 25, I would be very strongly looking at local regulations regarding waste disposal in that case. 1 to 100, I personally haven't checked if anything special is required around here. And in such dilute amounts, I don't think it's a problem. Based on all of this, in terms of safety, I'm going to rate Rodinol 1 out of 3. There is a somewhat moderate risk of skin damage, but you are very likely to come into contact with it while using it as a developer. The OnePlus 25 working solution has caused me some fairly nasty Rodinol burns in the past, so the actual stock solution itself would be significantly worse. However, the risks associated with this are generally 
pretty easy to deal with just by using basic PPE procedures and ventilating your workspace. In terms of handling, there isn't really a huge amount to say. Keep it away from light, keep it away from heat, acid, alkali, bases, <clears throat> and oxidizers, and it's probably gonna be okay. Handling and storage is really not a big deal with Rodenol. It doesn't require anything specific. The main thing is actually just to keep it in the dark. As you see here, its chemical stability is fine. There's nothing really going to happen. It has a very long shelf life for a reason. That is because it doesn't break down easily. It's not going to be a problem in this regard. So this is the bottle of Rodenol provided by the Photoshop for the purposes of making this video. And this one is a bottle that I already had lying around. You can tell because it's old, it's a bit crusty, but it's still good. Both of these bottles have childproof safety caps where you have to push down and then unscrew the lid rather than just plainly unscrew it. However, this does not mean for one second that these bottles are identical in terms of practical safety considerations. This bottle of R09 has a very wide spout on the top, which means it's going to be very simple to pour. This one from Adox has quite a narrow hole, probably meant for syringes. However, none of the syringes I have fit it. So you have to actually put a needle in, not just a syringe. The main practical difference then is that this smaller opening means that if you're not using a syringe or a needle, which has its own risks, you're going to be suffering from gurgling with air bubbles coming back in through that small opening and that can cause splashes, which are obviously not a good thing. The last thing I want to note is that 4-aminophenol does oxidize in air to give a very nasty brown color. And this is what you will see in solution when your bottle is open and old. That's fine in the bottle, but that stain is extremely hard to get rid of. Uh, I don't think the material is particularly toxic. It should just be the oxidized form of 4 aminophenol. However, it's very stubborn and difficult to remove. And that's the main reason that in terms of handling, Rodinol gets a two out of three. Stains are easy to come by and hard to remove. In terms of disposal, Rodinol is bad for the aquatic environment. The 4-aminophenol itself is toxic to fish and the potassium hydroxide could potentially cause pH issues in your local water table. And then in terms of disposal considerations, it says exactly what I've been saying. Follow your local regulations. On this basis, I rate Rodinol two out of three for disposal. I'm knocking a point off because you can't just pour any old solution of Rodinol down the sink. And you may have to pay for disposal in your local area. Lastly, I want to talk about cost. Rodinol is one of the cheapest, most economical developers in existence. Not only is a bottle of Rodinol cheaper than most other developers, it's generally very easy to work with and it's used in very high dilutions. The most concentrated solution you usually use of Rodinol is 1 to 25, which is to say that this 500 milliliter bottle will yield 12 and a half ish liters of active developer at that concentration. That's enough for nearly 50 rolls of film. If you dilute it down to 1 to 50 or 1 to 100, the cost per roll gets even lower. On that basis, Rodinol gets three out of three for cost. Before we get on with the actual conclusion, I do need to thank the folks at the Photoshop.ie. They've provided me with a number of film developers and other associated chemicals with which to make videos, and I'm really looking forward to working with them going forward. I highly recommend you check out their range of products at their website, thephotoshop.ie, which is linked to down below. Not only do they have a good range of products, but they also have extremely competitive pricing. For example, I was recently able to order a box of Rolay's 4x5 infrared sheet film for nearly 10 euros less than I would have paid at the next cheapest European competitor. You might find your next excellent deal there, and I highly recommend you check them out. So to tally up our scores, in terms of safety, I'm going to rate Rodinol one out of three. In terms of handling, it got a two. In terms of disposal, it got two. And cost, three out of three. Rodinol performs very well, and I'm curious to see how other developers and film development chemicals perform using these same criteria as time goes on. So that's gonna be it for this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back with another one of these videos in a few weeks, but I do have something I want to do first.
something a bit more fresh and new. But yeah, that's it. So stay safe and bye bye for now. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Chaka1277 for new pictures every single day. If you like this channel and enjoy what I do, please consider subscribing or donating to my Patreon where the tiers start at just one euro per month.